Akeem Browder, who is a social justice advocate and, the agent of, and an agent of change, the Bronx native whose works, who works to honor the legacy of his brother, Khalif Browder, and mother by working with elect elected officials, lawyers, doctors, college students, and community-based organizations to change laws, policies, and regulations that devastate poor communities and families that have been impacted by another than mass incarceration and solidarity confinement in state prisons. He is the founder of Shut Down Rikers and the Khalif Browder Foundation. A civil engineer by trade, he is currently traveling the country promoting the six-part Spike Lee TV documentary docu-series, Time. The Khalif Browder story, he is a Green Party candidate for mayor of New York City. Let me introduce our soon-to-be next mayor of New York City, Khalif Browder. Thank you for having me, everyone. Um, I first want to start off by saying, uh, although all of the, uh, the New York team couldn't make it here, um, we do have an exceptional, exceptional team that didn't sleep and that helped get me into the, onto the ballot uh, for this 2017 election in November to come. And so now we're looking to take it towards the national team. And so our uh, national uh, leaders, we're looking for your support. Because um, as we know, first, I'm a black man. I am running for the Green Party. And I've been impacted by the, um, by the justice system as well. So that being said, three strikes against me already. So in that case, all everyone's support is necessary because when we, when we think about outside of the country and looking into, new, into the United States, do they think of Iowa? Do they think of uh, Alabama, Florida as being United States? Mostly, everyone looks at New York and says, well, the United States is New York, right? So um, it's important that we have a presence. And we do have a presence amongst us. And actually, the tides are turning. As we talk in New York City to um, potential, uh, potential uh, voters for us, the tide is turning. So we have a win. It's in your mind, and you have to start thinking of it now and thinking of that on what that change actually looks like. Because we, as a black and brown skin community, we make up 68% of the population in America. And in that, if that's the case, then we are not minorities. We are the majority. And so we have to get everyone to vote and to start having their voices heard. And by having just a 1% or the um, or the uh, high class percent vote, we are doing ourselves an injustice and that's why the homeless could be taken advantage of. That's why the disenfranchised going into these prison industrial complexes can be taken advantage of. That's why our children could be taken advantage of. What happened to my brother is a damn shame and it's a disgrace to our legal system. But our legal system isn't broken it's operating the way that it's supposed to. <clears throat> In that case, there's no reform of it. I say we've had more than 40 years of Democrats and Republicans running our country, running our cities. It's insane to think that, and it's the definition of insanity, to continuously do the same thing over and over, expecting different results. <clears throat> oh shoot! Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so um, I I did prepare a speech, and I do want to stick to the speech because it's that that I put my heart into. And so, don't mind me looking down. The words are actually what I um, want to get across. And if I try to speak it, it's probably going to leave out something. Um, the lack of affordable housing, wage stagnation, the wealth gap, institutional racism 
unequal educational opportunities, discrimination between poor black and brown people in our justice system, the lack of services provided for the communities with, uh, for the communities tra um, with transitioning the returning population and inadequate health and social services for the people, for people living in poverty. That's what New York in our current is, uh, is in, in our current state of unity is faced with, at least, at the very least. There are more problems and I don't intend to pretend that I will be the one person to fix it all. But we live in the United States of America and so it's about time that we act in a united way for America. If we think that housing, housing subsidies, housing subsidy and supportive services can create community and human connection, we are mistaken. We must follow the lead of nations that have focused on strategies for social inclusion, countries like Denmark and Scotland that work actively to destigmatize mental illness, substance, uh, substance use disorders, homelessness, and poverty. Until we see one another as equal human beings worthy of living happy and fulfilled and connected lives, we will continue to think of the world in terms of us and them, a world that a world view that is, I believe, fundamentally flawed. Creating a, a strategy for social inclusion and social connectedness must be a part of our thinking in our work to end homelessness. Now, in New York City, there's a common phrase, and even though people are talking about me running for mayor, there's a common thing that they say I'm the justice mayor, I'm running for justice in New York. Until we can all connect, or until we can connect all the, the problems that we have together, I'll be the justice mayor, but I wanna open your eyes to something other than social, uh, or, or, or um, injustice system. In the early 1980s, in the Reagan administration, um, the Reagan administration eliminated federal subsidies for uh, state-run mental institutions. The problem of homelessness in America resulted directly from widespread dumping of mentally ill patients in, into inadequate outpatient programs in communities over 30 years ago. Advances in, our, in drug treatments for mental, Ill, uh, mental illness may have made it, imposs it, made it may have made it possible for most patients to re-enter society, but only if society can provide adequate outpatient treatment programs and housing. In most cases, the state-run facilities no longer exist to provide hospital-level care as well as housing to the homeless population that requires them. Living up to our responsibilities to care for and house mentally ill members of society will go a long way towards solving the homelessness problem. Fast forward to now, Trump's proposed budget uh, would cut $4.3 billion or 12% from housing, while New York City currently has 275 houses, uh, homeless shelters, and one homeless shelter for, uh, for children, for, ad for adolescents. <clears throat> the city pays about 400,000 a day for, for hotel rooms and what, we, what they entitle cluster housing, private cluster housing um, sites. The city pays 400,000 a day for hotel rooms alone, which is 146 um, million a year Yet conditions at these alternate sites where 18,000 are currently housed um, dis as, as described as horrendous, and many of whom refuse to go to the decrepit and overcrowded shelters. People are shifted from one in inadequate form of temporary housing to another. Conditions is, are especially abysmal for homeless families some with, or most with no kitchens or individual bathrooms. 
In New York City, we also have a problem of giving, right, throughout the US, I bet, we have a problem with giving adequate information. When I talk about there's only um, 18,000 homeless in New York, this is per day, just so you know. They're not giving you per year. And then on top of that, that's those that can fit into our 275 housing units. And so the information seems like we have a small problem with housing 18,000 in a city of 221 million. Or, so it, it looks askew, and all of our information is that way. But if you don't tell the truth, the full truth, is that not a lie? Shelters, not homes, should be short-term while decent as permanent housing is obtained. New Yorkers spend months or even years in various forms of temporary housing. de Blasio, that's our, current, uh, our incumbent right now, um, de Blasio's policies do nothing to, fi to find permanent house homes for, the shel for shelters. Uh, for the sheltered population. The proposed plan of de Blasio to reduce homelessness on uh, the, uh, the homeless population by 2,500, which is only 4%, is pathetic and small, um, uh, is pathetically small and spans over the next five years. During his time, his current time in office, de Blasio suspended the construction of new homeless shelters for eight months in 2015 due to the opposition from business interests and not in my backyard sentiments whipped up in local communities. This year, we're near, nearly two thirds, excuse me, let me re restate this. Um, this is a city, New York City, where two thirds of its residents suffer from severe economic hardship, but New York City, but the New, uh, New York City rental, uh, rental uh, market is the second most highest uh, expensive in the country. Median rent for, one, for a one bedroom apartment is nearly $3,000 a month. New York City Housing Authority, that's NYCHA, the largest public housing system in US with a total population of at least 400,000 poor and working class tenants already backlogged 17 billion for repairs and faces a budget crisis due to anticipated cut of 75 million in federal funds. Water leaks and rampant mold routinely go unaddressed for months or even years. Whole buildings are becoming unlivable, adding to the homeless population. De Blasio's plan, de Blasio's broken promises from housing to education to healthcare, retirement, the drive to maximize profits means increasing misery for workers and their families. Housing is essential, but it's not sufficient. Housing alone, without attention to healthcare, behavioral health, employment, and, in, and education, and other supports, will continue to result in instability and recurrent homeless, homelessness for many people. Housing is essential, as I said, but it's not sufficient. <clears throat> we need all services, health service, health care is a service, child care is a service, transportation is a service, so, so are case management, substance abuse uh, treatment, and supported uh, employment. When we don't do work in all these fields, we're not looking at things pinpointed, or real, we're only at this point looking at things pinpointed. And so we can't see how I'm not just the justice mayor, but everything ties into the Justice Department. Our comptroller, who's running right now for office, our public advocate, James Lane, who's running right now for office. We have the vision of what it takes to make a new New York. We live in a city that keeps us blinded and tells us about the, the and not just the city and the country, about the American dream.
But what is the definition of a dream? It's a false reality. It's not real. It's not real time. And so, if we keep on living in a dream, when we wake up, this is what we wake up to. We need to start doing something about not just the inequality, but the disenfranchised. Those that go to jail are not aliens or those that are Im uh, um, being put through immig uh, immigration are not alien. We're all human beings, but we tend to look at everyone else as though they're not equal to us, yet they were built on our backs, my forefathers' backs. And this is the city that we live, and this is the government that we live in, taking advantage of the fact that they no longer want us here. And so what that looks like now is four of my best friends growing up no longer live in New York. So I'm out best friends anymore because we can't afford to live in the cities that we built. And so what do we do now? Do we continue complaining or do we come together? Do we continue to complain after we get the orange man in office? Or do we continue to, get, uh, to build? In our city, we have a problem where Green Party candidates or Green Party, um, uh, the Green Party members need a structure that depicts something of a team. We don't have enough, yet we have enough. We've had enough. So we have to come to the point where we're working together, whether I'm young to you guys, whether I'm not or whether I'm black, or let's stop looking at the differences and learn what we have in common so that we can change what we're complaining about. Just to end this all, I just want to let, uh, let it be known, my brother didn't die in vain. And so whether I win or not, my goal, and I know I only have one minute, so I'm, I'm going to keep it real brief. My goal isn't to win this mayoral election. If it happens, it happens. But my goal and my responsibility, which is everyone's responsibility here and out there, is to spark the interest or the the thing that makes someone come, and we keep on, com if I keep on complaining about how dirty it is out there, someone's gonna come and wanna clean it up eventually. It's our job to continuously bring up the dirt that goes on so that my brother didn't die in vain, my mother didn't die in vain, and whether I win like I said or not, I'm still gonna do my part as a human being, thank you.